So we're here today at Lander's shopping for the recipes that you guys have asked for. So I'm gonna grab all my ingredients from Lander's and then we're gonna head on to the kitchen studio. Back from Lander's, straight into the kitchen. Um, this video is for a particular group of people, college students, I have heard you, but a lot of you have been asking for like quick dorm room recipes and this has been on the back burner for years. This video today is to prove to you, my dear friends, with, who are grasping and, and grappling with the educational system and becoming smarter, better human beings on how you can make good food in a dorm room setting using limited appliances. So the idea today is one dish will be made with one appliance. My man Lance is insane. Uh, he sent through a video. Here's a quick clip of him doing his thing. So it might not look like much, but it's actually a very heavy meal. And I get to save time and energy when cooking and cleaning. How much pots and pans were used, or not at all actually. That's why I love it. All right, so inspired a little bit by what he did, I'm gonna do two recipes right now. The first one using the rice cooker, the second one using a water boiler. So we're gonna start really quickly. The rice cooker is actually on. A Little bit of oil goes into the rice cooker. So this won't get as hot as a stove, but it'll, it'll allow you to kind of fry things off as well. So garlic goes in. We're just gonna have to wait a little until that starts frying. Cover it to help that heat cycle through. In my rice cooker here. That's why. Put it in cook, kids. Chicken thighs cut up with some skin on, no bones. A little bit of flour. This will just give us a nice kind of starchy sauce for the chicken teriyaki. As the garlic sizzles, we're gonna add in our chicken. You wanna chop these up quite small so that they cook quite quickly as well. Once you start getting a little bit of color on the chicken, we're gonna add in some onions, some soy sauce, sesame oil, honey for some sweetness. I've never cooked any appliances like this, but it seems like it's working. So I'm gonna let that fry off for about five minutes. Once that's all properly combined, we're gonna add in some rice. Let that rice soak up all the flavor, kind of how you would make a risotto. Cover that with the water that's already boiling with our noodles. And then we let the rice cooker do its thing. So our rice cooker has been super hard-headed and keeps turning on and off. But the rice is pretty much done, that's probably why. Um, so I'm gonna let that fluff up a little bit for five minutes. Make sure you stir it from time to time to kind of make sure you get that crust in the bottom. In my kettle here, I'm gonna cook some vegetables. So I got broccoli just going in there. And I'm making sure to cut up the broccoli into small pieces like that so that it cooks really quickly in the boiling water. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt in there. All I'm looking for here is for the green to really pop out from the broccoli. Keep it nice and crunchy. Let's take a look at our rice. That smells amazing. We're gonna finish it up a little bit. So I was skimping on the soy sauce just because I wasn't sure how it was gonna react to the water, but it seems like it, the flavor of the soy sauce kind of dissipated. So I'm gonna add a little bit of it back in there so it gets it nice and dark. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of honey. Taste it to make sure everything's properly cooked. Broccoli's good to go. I'm just gonna strain it now. All that goes into the rice. Finish that off with some sesame seeds. Simple as that. Chicken teriyaki with broccoli with some perfectly kind of like gooey rice, which is exactly how I like my rice. Just kind of like mush. I wanna go back to college. For my water boiler, a lot of people eat a lot of ramen noodles. So I'm gonna make a really cool version of noodles. It's gonna be more like a spicy peanut noodle. That goes straight into the water boiler. While that's boiling away, we're gonna make a quick sauce for the spicy peanut noodle. Peanut butter, sesame oil, some honey for some sweetness, a little bit of mirin, and some rice wine vinegar. Blend that all together, add in a little bit of hot water to just help get that nice and liquid. You'll have a little bit of starch from the noodles in there as well. Now for some saltiness, a little bit of soy sauce, and that's basically good to go. So all we need to do now is wait 
for those noodles to cook. Our noodles are ready. All the noodles go into the sauce, and then we just toss everything together. Transfer the noodles into a bowl here. These are quick little hacks so that if you are someone that's cooking in your dorm room, you're not gonna spend as much as if you were eating kind of like outside. So that way you have more money to spend on alcohol. And we all know that's more important than food at this point in your life. So the noodles, what will happen is they'll absorb some of that um, sauce, and so they won't be as liquidy as they are now, but we're also gonna add in some vegetables in there because we all gotta be healthy. Chop in some scallions. Add some peanuts to the noodles. You can crunch these up if you have a mortar and pestle, but I'm pretty sure that's the last thing you have in a, in a dorm room. Transfer that into a bowl. Top that off with some chili flakes, a tad bit of sesame seeds, some fresh basil. This is the type of dish friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, any kind of friend would absolutely love. It's delicious and literally took 10 minutes to cook. All right, let's try this out. This honestly looks really fresh and beautiful. It's like sweet where you want it to be, savory. Little kick of chili with the chili flakes. I'm a huge fan of peanut butter. I think you can put peanut butter in anything. One with the ramen noodles comes together beautifully. You guys need to try this one. Next, we will be talking about our dear friend Margo, superstar in my books, made a protein chocolate cake in a microwave and made it a la mode, excusez moi, by adding some ice cream on it. I love the thought process. I'm not gonna change much from that. Yes, you can make cakes in microwaves. We've actually made banana cakes in a microwave before. Super simple recipe. Flour, sugar, uh, unsweetened cocoa powder, baking powder, mix all that together. A little bit of milk, some chocolate chips, some more milk, one egg yolk to make it super moist. Cake batter goes into a ceramic mug, and then all that goes into the microwave. I've never made this before, so hopefully it works. I should have probably not filled it as much. <laughs> We're 30 seconds from it, and it's looking like a Frankenstein chocolate cake. Oh my god, it's like literally overflowing right now. Ta-da! <laughs> Looks like diarrhea, but I'll eat it. I'm gonna make another pretty one after this. I just need to make sure I don't overfill it. But look, 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 it's spongy, which means it's cooked. It's not like raw, right? What I'm looking for is when I put my spoon in, it should come out nice and moist. Hey, that's not bad. It looks like that, eh? but it's not bad. It's super moist, nice and spongy. You got some like molten lava cake-ish things in there because of obviously the Chocolate chips melted all the way through. We're in a pinch, two minutes. Hell yeah. Next recipe, we're gonna be using the toaster. A lot of people submitted videos using a toaster. Denise made kind of like a cheese and tuna omelet using it with the microwave combined, which I think is pretty genius. Now I'm gonna go pop my eggs in the microwave. I'm gonna show you something that Selene and I actually used to do when we were kids and when we were in college, uh, which is kind of like um, pizza bread. We're gonna Try to make it a bit more interesting by adding some bacon. So I got a couple of strips of bacon here, which we're putting into our toaster pan. I'm gonna add some oil to that, some onions, and then we're gonna toast that until it's cooked. All right, bacon is ready. Now we're gonna just basically trim this baguette, open that up. Bacon and onions on a plate here. Now, I'm not gonna let all of this go to waste. Press the bed inside, really get all that flavor from the bacon. Other side as well. Take some garlic, sprinkle that on. That goes back into the toaster oven. Our bread should now be ready and perfectly garlicky. If the garlic doesn't stay on it, it doesn't really matter. Because all we're looking for here is flavor, and you can always put it back like this. All these burnt bits here, this is flavor. All right, so you got your perfect kind of bread base. Now we're gonna add some tomato. Any tomato sauce, if you're a college student, this is life. When I was in Paris in college, we had tomato sauce and literally you put it on everything. Bacon and onions go back on. Mozzarella cheese, this is where you can really kind of lay it on thick. 
And that goes back into the toaster oven once everything is perfectly gooey. Okay, everything should be perfectly melted and toasted on top. Now we transfer it without burning myself. And there you have it, two open-faced garlic bread pizzas. If that doesn't fill you up, whew. All right, this looks dangerous. Super cheesy and gooey. It has all the notes of pizza without the hassle. And this is the perfect recipe if you have like leftover bread. So that wraps it up. Um, thank you so much to those who sent your videos. Really cool to see how creative you guys can get in a small space with limited appliances. And I love the message of that, which is if you want good food, you actually don't really need much. You just need a little bit of creativity, a little bit of guidance, a lot of hunger. Um, <laughs> and just kind of like patience to use the same appliance over and over again to get to the end result that you want. So thanks for watching. If you guys like that video, please let us know and we'll make a college dorm room series two or kind of do like, a, you know, like those, those shows where they raid fridges. Maybe we'll raid dorm rooms. It sounds perverted. I'm 32, I shouldn't be saying that, but I don't mean it that way. I mean like we'll raid your kitchen